Thanks, everyone, uh, for the opportunity to present the Revolution story. Revolution has been public for about two years now. Uh, the company trades in the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, the majority of 2011, the company spent uh, their time amassing two fantastic property portfolios, one in North Carolina, which is a similar play to a very common story with the Remarco uh, developments. And then late in 2011, uh, we took the Mexican portfolio off of Lakeshore Gold, which was formerly and more, more commonly known from uh, in the West Timmins days because they're the last company uh, to explore in this region. As far as our management team goes and our directors, we've got a high quality team. Um, my main partners that I partnered with approximately three years ago uh, are the gentlemen from the Underworld days that was uh, discussed earlier uh, by the gentlemen from Ethos and Rob McLeod and Michael Williams. Uh, Rob is a fantastic young geologist who's made multiple new discoveries. Uh, I'd, I'd classify North Carolina as one of these most recent. Uh, my own personal background is I've raised about 250 to 300 million in the last four years for junior companies like this. Uh, when the, the opportunity made sense, that's when I partnered with both Robin uh, and Michael. And uh, we work day to day on a number of companies together. Obviously my day to day job is revolution. Uh, when we made the acquisition in Mexico, um, we added a pretty strong technical team that came with it. Uh, Dr. Peter McGaw uh, is responsible for the founding of Mag Silver. Uh, he is the individual who put together our Mexican portfolio and sold it to West Timmins uh, in 2006. The last CEO to drill these properties is Darren Wagner, who comes from West Timmins, now with Balmoral. And Hugh Wilson was the former VP of Exploration at Capstone. He does a lot of the recon work for us uh, and regional work that we do when we're looking at prospects. So just a little bit of history on, on the two projects, and I'll start with North Carolina. Uh, the slate belt in Carolina is not known for gold history uh, in the common uh, uh, population, but it actually predates the California gold rush and has a rich, rich history uh, throughout it. It's known as the Appalachian Trend. As recently as from 88 to 96, an old Kennecott mine called Ridgeway produced a million and a half ounces. And it wasn't until recently, uh, around 2007, 2008, when uh, Remarco purchased the old Hale mine, did exploration activities start to, to increase in this area. Uh, and we've picked up a considerable sized trend uh, in the area for those that have followed the story through, through Lawrence. Uh, the two properties I'll spend most of the time talking about are Laughlin and Jones Keystone. Our expectation this year uh, in Q3 will be toward, to move towards our first resource, which should come out about uh, just over a million ounces at the same type of grade as at Hale, roughly 1.2 to 1.3 grams. Uh, it's in an open pit type structure, and I'll walk you through some of those grades. What's interesting, after we made that discovery uh, within three quick months, Remarco spent approximately $7 million picking up the hickory and the ironwood deposit on our trend. And what I think it did for the trend is it really validated what, what we're doing. Uh, they, they have done an initial drill program and made a discovery at Hickory, and now they're moving along to a second phase program as well. The analog that we use when comparing the two areas um, is the infrastructure is the exact same, the host rocks are the exact same. If we were to have a box of core in front of you from down at Hale and um, at our properties, you can't tell the difference. And I do believe that's what led Remarkable to come onto our property at the same time. If you look at there up on the gold area on the right, that's an aerial view of what Hale looked like in 2008. This isn't just one large open pit from a, from a deposit standpoint. It's a series of pods that collectively together makes up your resource. And you see at Hale over the years, they've gone from a 600,000 ounce uh, purchase from, from Kinross and they've grown it now to which is a 4.2 million ounce deposit that they're moving uh, towards production. Before I move on to our drill results, obviously since some of the previous conversations we're discussing elephants, the elephant in the room for, for our, our success this year uh, focused around Remarco would be wh what's happening with Remarco in the permitting process because there's obviously become a cloud over the slate belt as a result. And it's easily categorized as Remarco went forward with an EA, which is known as an environmental assessment, which is an internal document for permitting instead of an EIS. And right now there isn't a gold mine in operation in the US that has not gone through an EIS component. So at some point this year, Remarco is going to submit their EIS. Hopefully there's going to be some joy from that and they're going to move towards permitting and production. And I would expect to see not only ourselves uh, see a pop with our share price, but I'd also see a bunch of the juniors that also entered the space start to get some joy uh, and, and exploration increase once again as it was about a year and a half ago in the area. What do investors care about is, is obviously our drill results. Here's a host of about uh, 15 to 20 different drill results. As you can see, they're very, very similar to, to what you're seeing down at Hale. We're going to probably come out with that first resource in Q3, looking at a million ounces of approximately 1.33 grams. And all of this is from surface. In particular, at Laughlin, the majority of our holes were collaring right into, into the system. Here's an aerial view. And just for a quick um, 
snapshot on the, the infrastructure of this area. This is old furniture country and, and hunting grounds. You've got fantastic infrastructure with power grids, uh, logging roads right up to the properties. For anyone uh, that has been on a site visit to the area, you, you'll understand what we're talking about when you run a comparable on these properties to hail and you look at the cheap infrastructure costs that they're going to have as they move towards production. This is an aerial view from Jones Keystone. Roughly a kilometer away now is Laughlin, and this is the area that we think we're moving towards that first million ounces with the potential to grow it to two to two and a half in the next 18 months. So we, we feel we had a fantastic year in Carolina. Uh, we put out our last 10,000 meters of drill results in January. We didn't have a lot of joy from it, although they were fantastic uh, additions to what we're doing. Multiple intercepts over a gram, and I think that speaks to the remarkable permitting issue. We then made an acquisition in Mexico, and it doesn't speak to what's going on in Carolina because we continue to drill and we continue to acquire land in the area. This opportunity was a unique area to pick up. It puts us in a position where we become the largest landowner from an exploration standpoint in Mexico. Uh, we picked up a 350 square kilometer uh, property portfolio right in the heart of the Penasquito, Camino Rojo, and Cerro San Pedro trend. For those that remember, Camino Rojo was, was formerly Canplatz, Cerro San Pedro was formerly uh, Metallica. This property portfolio was put together uh, by Dr. Peter McGaw uh, in the late uh, 90s and then it sat basically as non-core in both West Timmins and Lakeshore and hasn't seen a lot of modern exploration. Our current plans are to get three drill rigs turning. We should be drilling by the end of March, if not the first week of April. The, three, the first two targets we will be testing is Navarro, where there's a rich history of past production and was a former Kennecott exploration target that has a favorable hole of 21 meters of roughly 12 grams gold and 30 grams silver. Our favorite target beyond Navarro is also Cheeky, which we just completed a, a large sampling program that included the entire property. But primarily at Cheeky, what's outstanding is it's a 400 by 200 meter grid with over 50 to 60 samples that uh, were north of a gram material uh, with, with multiple high, uh, high grade seven, eight, nine, and 10 gram intercepts. So never been drilled, looking, very for, looking forward to getting the drills turning in this area as well. Our third drill rig will be dedicated to another property portfolio that came in here but just so that everyone's clear, uh, 80 to 90% of our exploration dollars in Mexico will be focused on Universo. We have three other properties, Montano de Oro, I'll look to sell or JV. Luevo de Oro, same thing. But La Bufa uh, is a rich, rich gold and copper uh, discovery. It has a million, has had previous history of a million tons of production at three grams gold and two and a half percent copper. Uh, for those, again, following the story, yesterday we put out our first sampling program with multiple intercepts uh, of assays returning over 20, 20 grams per ton gold, and five, six, and seven percent uh, copper. We'll be looking to drill this in Q3 of this year. And here are uh, a basket of those, of those results. Just as far as the capital snapshot goes on, on the company, uh, we're very well supported institutionally. Um, we've done two significant financings. Uh, the first one we raised at uh, $9 million at 60 cents. The majority of our shareholders right now we, uh, Sun Valley Gold owns 13%, Kinross owns 10%, which was a strategic placement we did back in October. And then uh, your typical uh, junior gold firms from Arbin, the Libra, McKenzie, Dundee, Precious Metals. So we've got a fantastic uh, institutional ownership and uh, pretty strong management ownership as well. I think we've done a pretty good job in 2011 amassing a, two great exploration portfolios. Uh, we'll have three to four drill rigs going on both areas. I would expect 7,500 meters to 10,000 meters of exploration drilling in Mexico uh, by the end of Q2 to be reported, and to have a, uh, two drill rigs turning back in Carolina in Q2 and reporting again in Q3. Those five to 7,000 meters in Carolina should be moving us towards our first resource. Thanks for the opportunity, and obviously we'll be around for uh, questions.